right, and then we're gonna move this to here. All right, and welcome to Anonymous Bites Back, episode 53. This is Tyler, your host. I guess I'd like to introduce themselves. Hi, this is Sarah from Disrupt and Clean and Water Coalition. Uh, my name is Preston. I'm from Texas. And uh, 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 Sarah, we're going to talk about some stuff today. Yeah, uh, we had we, on the, the uh, Clean Water Coalition page. We've gotten a submission from um, someone in New Jersey who was putting out a call to water protectors to come out and uh, stand with them. And when we did a little bit of research into what was going on, it brought up um, what was was not all, uh, not new news, but it um, it was um, largely ignored by mainstream media at the time because of the the, uh, the elections uh, taking place last year uh, when the report basically got dropped uh, about the presence of the uh, chromium-6 in the drinking water of pretty much every person in the country who has um, a, a water just uh, like public water distribution um, to their uh, to their home so I uh, looked into it a little bit more, and uh, for people who aren't familiar with chromium-6, um, it, it, kind of, it goes all the way back to the first instance of people um, finding out about what was going on with their drinking water back in the 80s um, that had to do with the pipeline, uh, the gas, natural gas pipeline that had cooling towers, and the cooling towers were uh, using a um, chemical that had leached into the water and that was what became the the basis for the um for the the giant aaron brockovich uh settlement back in 90s in 97 or 87 i have to pull up the actual details on on all of that but i mean it, you can even see it on wikipedia um basically it was one of the largest direct action judgments in history um in terms of the the amount of money that was paid out it it was actually not completely paid out at the time it, it was the last payment was actually made in 2008 and it was for damages for the the people in hinkley and um basically that didn't just go away. I think a lot of people assumed that, well, that was taken care of and, you know, that was a big mess, but people got their money because um, they're going to potentially have to deal with cancer later in life and not to worry. Uh, but the environmental working group on their website, they had published the information and actually has an interactive map that shows you that their best, their best uh, estimate as of, reports that were done on the water that was tested back in like 2015, not even this this past year, um, so it's probably gotten worse, is that the chemicals in at least 218 million uh, Americans' water. And, and that's, that's just testing from the distribution centers. This isn't saying that you people went, received test kits and had to monitor their own water. So in other words, this doesn't cover anyone who has a private well on their on their uh, land so I know that m most people who have private wells will get their water tested every few years but that's not something that is necessarily required for you to do so it's possible that we have um, the entire water table affected at this point um, this just again it just it just focuses on the distribution centers and you can go onto the map you can click on your county you can you can see it it, it will tell you the parts per billion and basically, um, as a result of the the case, the court case in California and Hinkley, it, it it talked about how they had established basically their their goal for the California public health goal. It was um, 0 0.02 parts per billion present in the water was considered anything anything above that was considered to be unsafe, uh, unacceptable basically because this is a this is a metal a heavy metal that stays in your <laughs> in your body. Uh, and it just like lead, it's not something you're supposed to be drinking. Um, so anything above that is unacceptable. Now it looks like on the on the uh, map here, you have ranges from anything uh, from like 0.19 parts per billion to um, as high as like we we're just talking about Oklahoma has uh, a, re a really high level in this one one distribution area where they're as high as like 18.8 parts per billion. We have one 
one that tested as high as 67.2 parts per billion back in 2013. I mean, like these are insanely high numbers when you're talking about zero, well, point zero two percent is anything above that is unacceptable. You're talking about levels that are just off the charts across the entire country. And nobody um, seems to really be aware of it because the only, the only news uh, outlets that I can find that published this were the Environmental Working Group. Um, and they're an organization that monitor, monitors this type of thing. Their, their last update was from last year. Um, the Patch, um, which is a very, very small publication online for local journalists to basically fill out like what they found out in their hometown. So that was actually where I got the initial report um, back then. And that was, that was, uh, that was for the area I live in. The one that was submitted was for New Jersey. So I don't know if you look up the patch in your area, but if you go back uh, to last year when they would have put this out, this information out, it was, um, it was available there. And then the only other place that I noticed it was available was, of course, on the EPA website. But they aren't due to put out a formal report as to um, what they want to, like their findings and what, how they're going to uh, address this until sometime this year. And even then, that's not an agreed upon year. They don't have to, they don't have to come out with reports on this um, it, at, under a specific schedule, as far as I can tell, I, I've been looking through all of their their publications, and the, even the the information that they have there was last updated in '98, right after the the judgment, uh, the initial judgment came through against uh, PG&E back in in that uh, that giant lawsuit um, that was filed uh, with with Brockovich being a part of that. So, yeah, it, it there there's a lot. There's a lot of uh, of uh, questions that come up in the report that that was filed by or that was published by the environmental working group. Basically, they're saying like even if the EPA comes out with their report this year and says like this isn't um, this is a very high level and we don't we don't think that's a good a good thing. Obviously, um, they could completely ignore all of the recommendations by any uh, you know reputable comp any reputable laboratory or or um, uh, organization and and just say well we're not we're not going to get involved in um, regulating this we'll turn it over to states because it looks like some of the states um, have actually tried to put out laws saying like this is this is not acceptable this is acceptable obviously California that's where I'm, I'm getting that information that has to do with anything above the 0 0.02 parts per billion is unacceptable but I don't I don't even see yeah. in other states where it's been regulated because I don't think people understand it's a problem. So obviously, if you don't know that it's happening, how are, are you going to be screaming about how this needs to be regulated? No. So um, it's it's everywhere. <laughs> I mean, like the more the more I look at it, and the more I realize how many people have wells still that haven't hooked up to the public water system. It's it's entirely possible that if you do an, a full investigation and you said, I'm going to get um, every single person in their home to, to test their water, whether they have public water or they have private wells, you could potentially be looking at um, all the water tables in the whole country. And you could also then, uh, if you could map that, you could also start looking at whether or not it's the, it's the fracking industry that has caused all of this to come out uh, because of the, the activities that they're, they're, you know, a part of with with um, pushing all of the natural gas through the water tables and then the pipelines distributing it. I mean, like I don't know enough about the the specific process of fracking, um, aside from you know like the the, the uh, high level. So I don't know what kind of chemicals are being released when they're doing because it's obviously not just natural gas that's going to get pushed up through the you know through the the different layers of of the soil when you're when you're trying to pull that out of extract that out of the ground you're going to have other things that'll be pulled out of the ground along with that so if people start looking at where this is coming from and why it's happening you might you may find that that's causing all of this or that you know the contaminants are just are still being leached into the ground from from uh you know the the chemicals that were causing it in the first place it's just there's there's so much that's not known at this point in terms of uh, what the actual specific cause is, but you can see the results. I mean, that's not, that's not uh, a, a, 
a debate. <laughs> it's pretty also, scary. Uh, previous uranium mining, you know, there's a lot of areas that went through that. Uh, yeah. And then somebody yeah, mentioned, then, uh, what is it, the, um, uh, before I forget, the... Uh, uh, uranium processing during the, during the war. Um, yeah, so super, super fun sites that were never really cleaned up, and they've, they've just been, they've been sitting. I mean, people have been, have, have been told, like, you know, after all this time, it's safe to build a, you know, like a, a community there and put, put your your housing up but really they don't know that that they're sitting right next to all this toxic stuff that's been buried in the ground and that that's that's probably been leaching into the into the water tables too so you've got mining you have the super fun sites and then you have all the destabilization of the ground uh and the 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 tables underneath are are i mean like they used to all be separated to a certain degree into areas because like depending on how deep you depending on how deep you would dig your well, you would start, you would hit different water tables. And some of them would be kind of like, I guess it would almost be like a little pod where if you didn't go deep enough, you would run out of water, obviously, because it's not linked to a larger water table. So I don't know how many, I don't have a map of all of those layers of how it's connected across the country, which would be interesting to look at as well. Like how much of this is just one giant pool of water that we're all pulling from. Well, Regardless. some of them get recharged. You know, a lot of a lot of them do get recharged, but, but there's like one in in the uh, Nebraska area that's kind of a closed off system that's been pumped for decades, and they know they're going to run out at some point. It doesn't really replenish, nor like others do. And uh, so, yeah, that, that's a that's a, a finite source. Um, other things that now this is another one that's happening is radioactive snow linked to Fukushima radiation there's been several snowfalls and this is a few years ago it started in montana where they would pick up high levels of radiation in the snow Uh oh yeah what's going on with facebook oh seriously what happened <laughs> i have no upstream you got cut off uh, yeah 100 percent. oh no it's back up okay I was just going to share. I just I just pulled up the water, uh, the USGS uh, water link. So I'm just going to throw that into the chat so you can add that to the links that you put out um, at the at the top or whenever you throw them out, Tyler. Because um, if people are looking to to uh, check the water tables and see that against the um, environmental working group tables, it looks it it actually looks like when you when you click back and forth and you look at the maps. It, it pretty much correlates between the two in terms of where the water tables are and then when you see what the, the what what the um, chromium 6 uh, spread is for the the affected areas it all, it matches up pretty nicely actually <laughs> stream flow and, to our and, viewers uh, uh, we are having some problems with the back end with Facebook it's definitely not my network connection it's definitely Facebook <laughs> it is definitely Facebook. Holy shit! Well, we'll keep on streaming. <laughs> Still up there. Uh, what's, what's? It's like my my internet is just like the upstream keeps on hopping around from zero zero to four kilobyte four mega four megabit. It just can't stay stable. Hmm. It looks like you're still there. Yeah, we're still there. <laughs> now, uh, do your do these people have data like on the offshore, the coastal waters as well? Because, um, I mean, this whole radiation wave came across years ago, and it's still continuing. The levels have to be getting higher along the coast. It's like they've. It's almost like they've just stopped even bothering, you know, taking tests because they know it's going to be off the charts. Yeah, I I think that's what's happened because if you the more I researched what was going on in terms of the available data, it just stops cold. It, it looks like they got to a point where uh, they they basically recognized, um, holy shit, this is bad, 
and then something got shut down like somebody shut them down basically it stopped happening they weren't monitoring because across the board i think it was 2010 there was testing for for chromium and then there was stuff for um for all the water that, that that was coming through, all of the even the fish, there was fish that were coming over from from the the west coast that had uh, radiation from Fukushima, and then all of a sudden I stopped hearing about um, uh, testing on that. I mean, there there is stuff being being done um, on a smaller scale, but I don't know how 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 much that's getting into the public domain as to, as far as like you know this the not only the the snowfall on the west coast, but your food source has been tainted. <laughs> like you, 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 you're, you're basically fishing out of a radioactive. Yeah. Ocean. I mean, I'm sure it's even beyond that too, because when you think of, mm -hmm. when you think of just the, the fish, it's not just that the ones that you're eating, it's everything that's living in that water is being affected. So how many, how many species are going to die off because of that or mutate and then have, have problems? depending on how much is, and then they still haven't fixed it. I think the last robot they sent in got melted. Yeah, the levels, levels have gotten so high, yeah, you're even taking out the equipment. I mean, that's nasty. Yeah, that, <laughs> that's really bad. You're blowing the electronics, I mean, you know, it, it, you know physical matter. It, and it's, it, well, well, it's getting worse, it, it, not better, because it, it was like they, right. they sent in test robots and they said, okay, well, this one lasted an hour. And then the next one we sent in, though at least the last one I had heard of it, it didn't last beyond 20 minutes. So the levels are increasing. They're not, they're not contained and they're not yeah. decreasing. This isn't like, oh, we just put a dome on it and it's okay. No, even that wasn't okay. But I mean, regardless, it's, it's getting worse. Um, so that isn't being talked about very much. There are there are news outlets like independent news outlets that are covering it, but even then, it's limited amounts of information that are getting out uh, surrounding that. Well, they've passed laws over there. You can't criticize the government and mention anything about Tokyo Electric Power. You can't complain about Tokyo Electric Power or anything they're doing. So, you know, as long as that's the case, if you speak out against it, you're jailed. Yeah, it, it was it's, it was not something that that is um, even if you're not jailed for it or if you're if you're not supposed to talk about it. Usually, what happens that I've been seeing is as soon as something gets traction um, in any news outlet that that gets over a certain number of of viewers or a certain number of subscribers or you know interest in terms of uh, readership, you suddenly see that there's some new new dilemma that's in the in the public domain that we have to all be worried about now with regard to like, fit, the administration or something else. It's just distractions. So you never are supposed to focus on what's really wrong. Like everybody cares about what's going on with the with the president and Russia and all this stuff, but that's not really our big problem. What's it called? Like, there are, there called are other problem, uh, problem distraction solution. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's actually quite common. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. just gotten out of control. I mean, like it used to be something that we, you know, it it wasn't as, it wasn't as obvious before. Now, now you can see the direct correlation between ah, this is a real problem. Why don't we get people to pay? Oh no, we have to focus on this now. Uh, well, you know that 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 you, it used to be a little bit more savvy even. Now it's just it's just blatant. At least they, I I see it as blatant because every time this uh, something starts to get some some kind of uh, reaction, it's no pivot. So I'm sure that, that that's a, that's a very good reason that this didn't that, that Fukushima doesn't get my, very much coverage, and that you're not going to hear about how you have uh, you know chromium six in your water everywhere, and that's not including like I said like the the the, the issues that Flint has, which has lead as well. So now you, you're talking about two two heavy metals in your water. Now, uh, this being everywhere is, to me, you know, tying to like runoff. You know, you also have this chem trailing where they're putting in these barium salts and allegedly radioactive mm -hmm. materials to like help disperse it around. Uh, aluminum levels being high. Aluminum oxide, yeah. Yeah. some in, in some places on the West Coast, even lithium in certain places like you know, why would lithium levels be high in a forest? Yeah, you know, I don't. Just... Uh, you, I would ask. I would ask if there's an electronic recycling plant near. 
nearby. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, no, this is like a lot of rural areas. I mean, they're, they're, the people out there, you know, knew about these places. And it's just weird because it's like the water supplies don't have it. So it's like it's like on the leaves and stuff. So, you know, it's it's being sprayed somewhere somehow. Yeah, well, From, what, what, it, what, was it, what did we used to call it? It was acid rain. When you were talking, yeah, about it, I mean, at least then you knew it was rain. It's you know, acid <laughs> rain. Oh, it was, it was coming from a, a power chocolate, plant, yeah, though. You, you knew the cause. You know, right, now right. it's like now it's like okay, well, we snuffed that out, but oh, but if we're purposely chemtrailing for some other, you know, weaponized weather or military issues, well, hey, that's fine, you know, or weather control, you know, tests, because uh, that goes on. But it, but if your smokestack does it because you're producing power, that's bad. Right, right, because that's that's what the real <laughs> that's what the real pollution is supposed to be. Yeah, all the all the smokestacks, and I mean, you can yeah. see it was, obviously I mean, you know, it it does affect the trees and everything around it because if you drive into areas that used to have um, a lot of pollution being pumped out of the factories, like I mean, you can see if you're driving across the East Coast, like when you get into areas like near Pittsburgh, you can see like for for miles around the the area, it's just all like blight across the trees. But that's that's not going to cause all of these 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 problems on a national or a global scale. I mean, like I'm sure this isn't no. the only country that's seeing this. And in fact, I wouldn't be surprised if China. I mean, because water tables don't just end at your border; just it's a line on the map. So I don't even know how you know where where all of this stuff is is um, is showing up in Canada and in Mexico. I mean, it's got to be that all over the place. And in fact, now that I look at the, um, now I look at Alaska, it's not even listed in terms of where, what the, uh, the radiation levels are on any of the maps that I have, or with regard to the chromium uh, pollution. Uh, I, I noticed that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, that was the whole purpose, really, of moving, well, you know, forced by the economics of, of having all your manufacturing move out to overseas locations. You, you moved all that dirty, you know, dirty industrial production somewhere else. And now they're having the problems, India, China, you know, we're cleaner and still, you know, of course still have issues, but you know, the worst of it was kind of farmed out, you know, but you should see worse problems there. I mean, there's rivers, uh, you know, they're having, you know, in China, you know, like these rivers that catch on fire and they don't even flow out to the sea anymore because they pump so much water out. And, I mean, if there's ever a place where you're going to see the, extremes of, of these problems that would be over there. Yeah. I, it's It would be very interesting uh, to see a map that was linked up with, you know, like globally. And, and again, that, that was um, something that I was wondering, like, if, if, we, if we started uh, piecing together everything, uh, how, how, that, how bad that would look. Probably the, like the whole, the whole globe has been affected to, in one way or another when, when it comes to all of the different types of pollution. It's just that you, you would see in, in the past that more of the organizations would be able to either get their data out or they seem to be actually cooperating with each other to do, the, to do more um, robust reports. But now, I mean, like, just, like, just like I said, like the last thing that basically came out was updated of the last year. I mean, who knows what happened to the people who are actually working in that foundation and why they stopped updating things. I'm sure that they either got paid off, threatened, or, you know, a cer a certain, to a certain degree, just were, were waiting on, on, the, on, the next, uh, on the next step, which would be on the EPA. But if you wait for them, that could be years. I mean, it's just they're not going to rush into getting you more information if it's not going to benefit the, the companies in the country. I don't. I don't think that you're going to get very. You're going to get less and less information, if anything. So I think. I think that needs to be looked into in terms of getting individuals to actually start testing their own water and putting it, putting it together as a as a crowdsourced map and, and a report that everybody has access to, so we can start saying like, okay, you know, this isn't just this isn't just public water. This isn't just water on a on a specific coast. This is this is everywhere. Because you know that's that's something that everybody needs. But you can't live without it. So I think that um, there are going to there are going to be a lot of of people who agree and and come together with with uh, with each other if they have the uh, 
if they have the information and they start to see that there's a pattern and it's not just limited to you. And then also when it, with regard to, to health, like I don't think a lot of people have, have linked you know, just their, their drinking water to how they could, they're getting cancer or they're, you know, having all these increased, um, uh, increased cases of like what, when you were saying Tyler, how the, uh, just with the vaccines, yeah. you know, like the increase of the aluminum and all of that, like all of these things together are probably a lot worse than any one thing by itself. Like when you have all of the, when you have all of the aluminum and then you add the lead and you add the chromium and all of that, I mean, you're going to get something. You're going to have some kind of mutation, uh, you know, like of your cells, and something's going to happen, whether it's cancer or Alzheimer's or w what have you. You're, you're not going to be able to um, pinpoint it either because that's so general. Like, how can you prove this is how you got it unless you start keeping track of what is actually going on? And you can't rely on uh, the EPA or any, any independent group that's out there right now to necessarily be in charge of that. I, mean, I think it really does come back, it come down to in individuals getting together and saying like we're we're going to work to to provide this information to one another and not not wait for somebody else to come along and organize it and do it do it at, at a um, OSHA you know a government sponsored level. OSHA, what does OSHA say on chromium six? <laughs> Cancer. Yeah. Cancer. It, it's a car. It's a known carcinogen. Yeah. So, the even and and the thing is, like the EPA is being advised by this group that says, uh, well, and obviously it's a special interest. It's a laboratory that's saying, like, um, well, it's not really been proven to have caused cancer with the group in Hinkley because, um, you know, it, there are far fewer people that would have had cancer um, as a result of, of this than we expected. And then also they're trying to say that it can't be directly linked back to that because of all the other factors in the environment. So and later on, it, become, it becomes a problem because, of course, like how are you supposed to track it back to that source unless you have the data at the time that says this was a huge problem specifically uh, in this area and people were ingesting this. So therefore, you know, it's, it's safe to say that, you know, anyone who has cancer, you know, two years, two years later, three years later, 50 years later had, had been exposed to something. So if you don't know you're being exposed to it, you can't, you can't, you can't go back and say, yeah, that's what happened. I mean, and, and with pre-existing pre conditions, everything's a pre-existing condition now. Yeah, that's another way. Uh, I, remember, I, mean, I, remember, I remember back in the day before there were laws against it, um, they used to, insurance companies used to able uh, were able to charge you uh, more money because of pre-existing conditions. So. Oh, yeah, yeah, nothing's changed there. I thought there was yeah, a law. There, there, were, there were laws in place against that, but... Um, no. There might be, you know, some some limits but yeah you're always going to pay more that's that's just the nature of insurance though you 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 can't actuary that out well actually you can actuary it out you know it, yeah. it is, it I, is was gonna say, I was going to say i was going to say i was going to yeah, say yeah, i was going to say uh, <laughs> everyone has a dollar value everyone has a dollar value and you'd be surprised how much money the insurance companies invest in lawyers to, to fight uh, you getting the treatment that you need yeah, you're you're in fascist healthcare. Once you start costing them money, that means they have to limit care to make more money. Uh -huh. And so your health, your doctor-patient relationship goes to hell, and you don't need the service. So yeah, it's a great system. You know, you get old, and all that money <laughs> you've paid in, they just tell you no, and you go get you go get effed. You know, goodbye. You go find a lawsuit while you have while you have chemo, right? <laughs> Yeah, you're, you're, you're all, we're done with you. Yeah, yeah and, and, and it's the same in every industry, though. I mean, like, isn't that the same when, whenever there's a, a, a decision to recall a, uh, a car? You know, like, it's it, basically they crunch numbers and decide, well, you know, it's actually going to cost us more to do the recall than it would if X number of people die. So, you know, um, even with their lawsuits and everything else, and if we have to pay out, it's actually half the cost of doing the recall across the board. So we're not going to recall it. 
it's it's all in the interest of the corporation, not of the individual. So it's, yeah. Yeah, the balance there is if you run them out of business, then you're not going to get much of anything. Though we'll just go to bankruptcy and see what we can sell all their stuff for. And, but if you can make them pay, that that's the point though. They don't, you know, let, you know, like even bank, you know, that they, they find doing stuff wrong. They, they don't hit you with enough of a fine to make them blink. No. Yeah. You know, if you actually you know hurt them, then it would stop. But you don't want to break them, and then the company goes to hell. You, there has to be some balance there. But uh, you know, unless it's blatant, if you're just dumping contaminants and straight in the river unprocessed, you know the process, and you're not doing it. Well, that's different. You're, that's criminal activity. It's, uh, you know, they, you know a lot of this too. Well, the problem is if you're going to live in an industrialized society. You're going to have to deal with an industrial residue problem, and that's that's what this is. This is the dust and all the things that get done from from mostly driving, you know, energy and industrial activities is what creates most of this. And it's a it's a choice of how do you want to live? Do you want to continue to live like that and deal with those problems, or do you want to step back? Uh, to me, it's obvious. People choose. We we want more. We want a you know a better a better life, more industrialization. They don't they don't want less. And at the same time, the problems get bigger. This there's really no solution. Do the best you can. Filter everything the best you can. Well, I mean, there is a solution. They need they need to be held accountable, which isn't isn't some. I think I think that's the problem uh, when you when you look at this type of, of of report that comes out and you see how it's it's people are going to have to wait on uh, on an organist an established governmental body to do something about it. Well, no, you don't need to wait on them. They need to be made to do what they're there for, or they need to be removed. Uh, you know, basically. People are, are accused of being complacent because I don't think they realize that they have the power to change things. They haven't been educated to understand that they, they know. I mean, and, and I'm not saying people haven't been educated in, the, in, in that they haven't gone through school. I'm saying that they've specifically been taught not to, to understand that they can, they can remove people legally. And then they can also have the option of just not participating in a system that refuses to work for you. And if you don't, you know, if you even if you don't have the money to put into a legal team to remove those 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 institutions from power, you can simply say, I'm not going to participate in that and then do something along those lines where you 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 work as as the citizens of that country, as the 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 true rulers of that country, because it's yours to actually come together and and create your own systems outside of that. And say I'm not I'm not going to be a part of this, but this is what I'm going to do to counteract it. Instead of sitting back and just throwing up your hands, saying, "Well, what what do you want me to do?" That's our country. You know, the, the problem is you see, when you see people do that, people trying to grow gardens in their in their own yards, or these more uh, I don't know. Um, green green communities, you know, the hippies, you know, trying to grow their own food, you know, have some like their own cooperative community. They don't let you do it. I mean, even the Amish now have problems uh, with with this government and trying to live their lifestyle. They they don't. That's not what they want you to do. Apparently. Right. Well, it's dangerous because you know it, uh, that's where they see. It's just like why 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 is why is a true anarchist a, a serious threat to the government? Well, it's not because you want. You want everything to be chaos? No, it's because you're you're actually doing those things. You're growing your own food. You're creating your own power. Uh, you know, you're generating your own power. You're doing things in in a cooperative manner. And anytime you start cooperating and providing mutual aid to one another, that means you don't need um, you don't need institutions. You don't have a use for them, and they're the one. They're they're only existing because because we put money into them and we put effort into them and we pay attention to them. We are being <laughs> censored. <laughs> well, that was that was a firm one there. No. Well, on. what was the first thing that we mentioned was chromium 6? 
Yeah, it's I, I, yeah, it's. Uh, you know, I don't think that's a coincidence. I don't think that's people just being angry about whatever, you know. I couldn't. I can't hold this. I wasn't holding a stream for like the light of fucking day it, yet. Uh, upstream, I'm talking to you guys, looking at my network monitor. Everything's fine. Oh, this is so weird. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we're good now. <laughs> we're still up. Hour yeah. in. Yeah. Well. Yeah. So it 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 is. Uh, you know, it's not impossible to change. It's just a question of of realizing that you can and and then and then working towards that but i think um the people the people who i know of that are spe are, are are still um feeding into this system and think that they don't have a, 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 a any way of affecting change they've kind of and they've kind of given up maybe for the lack of a better word like not that they don't care they just don't know how to do it i think that that's because a lot of people haven't worked actively to connect each other in that way. Like we, we use Facebook and other social media platforms to talk about, oh, what are you doing tonight? And what are you doing next weekend? And look at this cute thing that I found. And like all of the stupid stuff that doesn't really uh, change anything, but are people actually talking about like, so are we getting together this week to uh, teach each other how to, you know, how to use permaculture effectively? Like, uh, you know, creating communities, um, that actually make a difference as opposed to just using it for entertainment purposes. And that, I don't think that people really understand a lot of, 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 of the capacity, like capabilities that are right there in front of them. Like they've, they've been, they haven't been taught to use the technology in, in the way that a lot of people have figured out um, that are supposedly the dissidents and the threats to the government established order. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I don't think they, they, they really grasp how powerful it is. And that's, again, why, um, again, why, why uh, like the UK is not the only one, but why they would specifically want to, uh, you know, privatize or, you know, like um, regulate the Internet. Because as long as you're a business that is spewing out entertainment, you can afford to pay for it and you can get the fastest stream and you're going to just keep putting out like TMZ interviews and crap that doesn't make any difference. But if you're an individual who wants to get together a whole bunch of hippies, like you said, to go out and garden and be really radical and, <laughs> and do something that would, would actually uh, change the way that you have to interact with the economy, then, you know, you're not going to be able to get a message out to a larger audience because you're not going to be paying like a large corporation would. So in that sense, it's not even about targeting individuals and censoring them. It's just more of like, are you going to pay into the corporate system? And if you do, then we'll give you the same bandwidth or we'll give you the same reach as the rest of the mainstream media gets. If you're willing to put in millions of dollars into this and, and then, and then once you're established as that type of, as that type of organization, then it's a little bit easier for, for uh, companies to come in and, and try to squeeze you out of the market because you're, then they see you as a, a direct competitor. And that's when you get targeted, when, when you actually become uh, a player on their level. I, I think yeah, that a lot, a lot of the stuff doesn't, doesn't have to do with targeting individuals, um, except like if you want to look at WikiLeaks. Yes, when you get to that kind of level, when you're when you're actually putting out government secrets, then that that's a little bit different. But I mean, they're certainly not going to censor you just because you're talking about you know this is the best way to less best way to grow hot peppers. You know, <laughs> that's that's uh, not they, those, secret yeah, news. they just throttle you with the AI and the, the bots on that. Yeah, yeah. Less 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 uh, direct means of of coming after you, but I mean, like, yeah, you're not gonna well, you're not this, gonna get killed for that. To me, this goes back to like the nature of politics. It's it's a pay to play system. Everything revolves around you paying. If you go to court, it's the same way. You get a crappy lawyer, yep. public pretender. Well, you're screwed. Well, court, hey, well, it's the, a pay you to know, play. So you, you pay money. Hey, you pro you might you probably do all right. You, know? you you've seen that analogy that the that the court system isn't actually acting as uh, the judge isn't acting as judge and uh, the judge is acting as banker because it always uh, any any criminal or civil lawsuit ends up in a financial dispute. Uh, either you pay because of the fees, but you're ending up paying something at the end of the day. Yes. Yeah. 
Call it what so you want to call it. Call it, call it law enforcement. Call it what you want to call it. But you know, you get caught doing something bad, and uh, you rack up some court fees, and then the add-on costs to everything else, uh, including the court, whatever the fuck they want you to do, you're ending up paying a couple thousand dollars. Yeah, but the, I, but the, 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 you know, the system is about the lawyer, though. See, they're the the deal is they're making a ton of money off all these slaves that they run through the system. You know, what is it, 90 some percent agree to a, a essentially Wait. an out-of-court settlement or, you know, a pleaded settlement. So, you know, yeah, it's cha-ching, cha-ching, $300, cha-ching, $500, cha-ching, $150, you know. It is. Or they put your bail at such, such a high amount. <laughs> they need to shell it off that. Yeah, yeah that's the small stuff. bail needs to be removed, too. I mean, I think that that was something that recently happened with um, with, with the elections in uh, of the DA in Philadelphia. They, they were talking about how um, Taking away, uh, they, they want to get rid of the cash bail system, which uh, I don't understand why that's even a why that's even existing other than to support corporations because obviously if there are people who have been in prison for years because they couldn't afford to pay a couple hundred dollars and then your your life gets destroyed even if you get let out i mean because afterwards what are you supposed to do even if you manage to maintain your sanity and 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 you you're intact as a human being when you get out of that kind of system in some way, and you can still function in society. You're not given the opportunity because now you have to, you know, you have to you have to tell any potential employer that this is what happened. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's I'm one so, of those people. so unfair. I'm one of those I mean, people like, what, with, some, with some crazy ass charges. You know, like uh, they look at yeah. me, they're like, "You have a really good education, but what the fuck happened in 2004?" <laughs> exactly, and 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 it, so now if you, if you complain about anything, you can be charged with with all kinds of you know that that's basically the way that people are being, anyone who wants to affect change is being is being targeted that way in the sense that if you want to do something, we'll find a way to charge you with an offense, and then you're going to get uh, your whole life screwed up later on because you're not going to have a job, you're not going to, or or even better, if you can, the new the newest system outside of the private prison system, I mean, it's for a different tier of prisoner because, of course, you have to come up with the money to do this, but in other words, if you don't want to spend your whole life stuck in the, in the, uh, in the actual prison system in the sense that you're locked up in the facility, you can you can have yourself monitored with an ankle bracelet that you pay for. Yep. And and pay you, you pay have a payment plan. You have a payment prison. plan. Yep. <laughs> it's insane. I was watching. I know. One of my um, buddies. One of my buddies uh, um, did that thing and. Um, oh, he did. He yes, actually went through the process. Yes. Okay. And he did the uh, ankle bracelet, and at one point he got another DUI, and uh, and I never heard of such a thing, but he had to get a lot of money, and. Uh, there was it was called like pay as you go prison. So he was paying. Yes. He yes. was paying a hundred dollars a day to go to the local jail at, <laughs> and he was paying. Uh, he was only there between the hours of like eight to six, or ten to six, or some shit like that. And I was just like, man, this is gonna get expensive. He's like, I know, but I gotta work, bro. I gotta work. I gotta pay my bills. I gotta do everything. He's like, I'm barely making it, but I'm doing it. Right, so that's a whole nother level of of um, of uh, you know servitude because you know you have the 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 slaves who are in the detention centers who are being used to work in the fields and other other you know areas where they're being paid what two cents a day or some bullshit like that. That's how they justify that. And then you have people who are just not even let out that that are stuck in the prison system. And then you have people who have a certain amount of money who can afford to pay for an ankle monitor and live in a community where they're being rehabilitated, supposedly. And then you also have people who have a ton of money uh, compared to the average person who goes into prison who can pay $100 a day to do layaway prison. I mean, like, <laughs> you know, the only people that are going to eventually be outside of that, that uh, whole realm are just by virtue of, of money. Uh, and and not it won't it won't have anything to do with I mean, it won't have anything to do with whether or not you're deserving of something. It will just simply be do you have money or don't you? And it will be very obvious that it is a class. Uh, it, it is it is classes pitted against each other versus, you know, uh, you know, skin color or or anything else. When it comes down to it, it's just it's simply do you have the money to get out of this? 
If you don't, well, yep. we have a plan for you. <laughs> you know, you, you, you get the shittiest of plans if you have no money and if you have, a, you know, all the different tiers, just like phone, phone service. It's, yeah, it's a good corporate fascist system. It's a pay-to-play scheme. Yeah. <laughs> it is. You know, a lot of things are that way. You can, it's kind of sick and it's just laugh at it, but it's true. You know, the legal, yeah. the prison system, it, it, all, it all looks the same. It's all designed for certain folks to make a certain amount of money out of it. Uh, and it, it's always been that it's, way. It's just never, it's never been as, as obvious. obvious. Yeah. 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 So it's, it's, and it's affecting, um, it, like it's, it's, it's building on the core that's always been there and it's just expanding because it is a, it is a profitable business. So, you know, if you can make money off of these poor people, then why don't you expand it to the next tier of, paying you know like or, or next tier of citizens and then the next tier and yeah. the next so on and so forth so you're what going if, to never be able to escape it unless you are at that very top echelon and, level and where it, you're you're looking down on everyone else saying like well i can just throw them up you know a couple thousand dollars all at once and and get out of this completely it'll be more than that though more than that. <laughs> i just noticed that somebody oh, said yeah. something about uh, adam west had just passed away today oh batman yeah. Batman, yeah. I didn't know. Uh, Batman. Uh, oh, he was 88 and he passed away uh, from I leukemia. Oh, Mayor Adam West. Yeah, we're losing a lot of good ones this year. So. Yeah. They're pretty old, though. Yeah, we're losing some of the well, other 88, ones. but still. Still pretty old. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Bigger names. Oh, and then, true. well, knowing knowing all this, this is what gets me. Knowing all this, what we just been talking about, and the, and its fascist nature, why would people want government health care? They 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 want their free stuff, but at the same time, you're being duped into a government health care, and you know how that turns out. It doesn't matter what they're telling you; you know how that turns out. Well, I know, I and know they that still they... want it. It just it blows me away. It's like you really want the government in your life. You, you really think about it. I mean, you really want that? No, you don't. Because the you, answer I mean, most times is like, no, you know, it's fuck for them. profit, though. Yeah, that's the problem. Oh, as yeah, long as it's free, for profit. It's free. <laughs> yeah, they didn't, they didn't keep their promises. Let's keep that. Uh, that that's, that, that's what I see. It's like, you know, it was going to be free and affordable, became very expensive all of a sudden and manufactured. Well, the Nobody original, can the original it, ACA wasn't ever wasn't ever the program that it claimed to be, but even now, I think it's beyond it's beyond um, it's beyond what people are talking about in terms of like, oh, well, this is this is a problem because of the insurance companies pulling out and it was never stable. Well, no, it costs it costs a lot of money because uh, the the whole point was to to make people scream about how they want to keep it because whatever's coming down the road is much worse and 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 it's 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 just manipulations like you're saying it it doesn't have anything to do with the actual plan that's being put out there <clears throat> it's just getting people to fight for less of what they had in the past and an even shittier system and it really it does need to be it needs to be universal health care and it and a not in a not for profit uh, system right. where it, it, it you know you can go to the hospital if you need to and not have to worry about what's going to occur after you get out or halfway through and be told well sorry you're, you're you know you don't have enough money well that's ninety percent of America yeah so it was that happening for, through the ACA was that I mean it did it, it did insure more people and there were people whose lives were saved yes I don't I don't argue that and there are people who I mean like I was lucky enough to have private insurance through an employer but even even with the unions and people who had that advantage uh, i mean like even what's being put out now is is to get you to scream about it even more because now if you go without if, if you go without insurance for a certain period of time everything becomes a pre-existing condition again and and then so like if you go on strike as a union member what's going to happen to you if you go on strike for uh, an extended period of time and then um you, you can potentially lose your health insurance. I didn't know that. Uh, like, I mean, there was somebody brought that up about they were talking about like, well, what what happens if you know, like, if you're off of health insurance for a certain period of time, and can that be used against you if you're deciding to strike, even if you have protections through a union? 
you know, like that, that's something else with your plan. Um, and there were a lot of different, a lot of different sides of the story that were brought up in a conversation that I, I was part of. And, and it was, it was scary because it was, it was basically another tool for businesses to protect themselves and, and not have to give in to any demands from a union and, and say like, well, we don't have to, you know, we'll do, we, we, we won't even have to deal with this kind of revolt on that level to try to get better conditions or better pay or renegotiate contracts because if people go without um, go without actual agreements for a certain period of time, then you become a pre-existing condition completely and you can never find insurance again, basically. Because I mean, even if you go off of your insurance for a short time and you're able to pay COBRA, that, that is, is no guarantee that you can find another, another plan that will pick you up if, if uh, what is it, the only thing that wasn't a pre-existing condition was like impotence? <laughs> I mean, seriously, there was a list that came out and I was reading through it. And I'm like, so this is, you know, like, or, or, you know, of all the things, like everything, including, including rape was a pre-existing condition. I can, I can understand that. But honestly, if you ever use that against somebody and they bring it up to court that you wouldn't insure them because of the, that you got raped and they had HIV, um, you're going to look real bad in court. Well, that that was one thing, but I mean, I think it was also with with regard to mental health uh, assistance as well, in in terms of insuring people for any type of uh, because the the other thing was the the one the one uh, good part of the ACA was it brought the mental health providers around to being required to cover you at the same level of um, you know physical health. So, you know, if you wanted to, if you wanted to see a therapist, that should be covered by your insurance. Well, now the, they wanted to remove that protection. So everything is now pre, pre-existing condition when it comes to mental health as well. Well, I think, you know, I, I don't know. It's, it's... I mean, are you going to go to court and, and say, like, you know, they refused mental health treatment to me because I was trying to deal with this emotional, uh, you know, emotional trauma? I don't know that a lot of people are going to be able to go through that kind of trauma to deal with trauma. I think it's all relevant. I think it's all relevant. I think, you know, you know pre-existing condition is just another classification just to get extra dollars out of somebody. You yeah. Know, it's I mean, relevant. if you can afford to, uh, yeah. otherwise, otherwise it's just a, it's just a, um, it's just a deter, a determinant from, from trying to pursue any type of, of, uh, any type of, um, court case even too because i mean that would mean everybody would have to sue all the time for everything and then isn't that the most beneficial system so that you have to employ someone else to get you what you actually deserve as a as an individual well that's a great pr thing for the lawyers i mean full legal employment act (laughs) fleas yeah (laughs) when you think about it and that's that that is job security right there you, you you would have everyone would have to have their own personal lawyer to get anything and well, that's, then that's what my sister's doing right now she went out of uh, criminal law and now she's dealing with insurance cases and medical yeah medical stuff. Yeah. yeah well no she she was actually making more money as a criminal defense attorney but she just didn't like the um <laughs> it's just some of the some of the cases she'd see it just, oh with a defense attorney i thought you meant as a as no, a prosecutor no 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 it just it gets to you Oh yeah, yeah. That's, that's tough. That's a pre-existing condition, right? <laughs> Sorry, lawyers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but at least you know, at least you'll have your health insurance because uh, you know, at that level, you don't usually drop your insurance very, very often for a prolonged period of time. It's yeah, it's a mess. But um, with with regard to the um, with with regard to the the um, the lead contamination um, and and uh, everything that's going on in Flint, I think the last update that I had uh, in terms of of all of the efforts there were um, surrounding getting the community um, organized and um, we were getting more information as far as like who needed what and um, what was happening on the ground in terms of support that was needed. And there's, there's actually a group that is organizing um, 
or organizing uh, individuals to go out there and and uh, be on the ground and provide more detailed information um, in in general. And I think was was it Chris that was on the other show? And he said he was he was um, he was out there with Chelsea and others yep. who were working yeah. to to do all that. So uh, since then, there's there's been a lot more information provided um, to the community, and it looks like there there actually uh, is an, a concerted effort to support everyone on the ground in the in the camps and that that's actually good news that that you know people are are not waiting for for the the community um that's elected to actually start taking action um in terms of like giving support to everyone on the ground so there there are some good things that are happening it's not all doom and gloom from what i'm getting in terms of updates and and messages um regarding what's going on in, in the, the communities. Um, and there, as far as the, um, the call for water protectors in New Jersey, I did reach out to the, to the person who sent the information to the coalition and um, they were going to see if they could come on the show, um, I think the next, next episode and talk a little bit more about what's going on in New Jersey and, and probably um, give a little bit more clarification as to some of the issues that they're actually witnessing with re regard to the chromium uh, the chromium contamination but looking at the map I would actually I would like to see if we could get some more information from the um, from the areas that are most affected with the insane like 97.338 parts per billion yeah, I like saw in the that. center yeah, of yeah, Oklahoma in Oklahoma yeah and then we got another one hold on let me look at this map there's a really bad one in uh, central California in St I, 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 I'm sorry, this is a St Stanislaw County? County, and there's another one in Yolo County. Yeah, the city of Los Banos and uh, Atwater. Let me see. Yeah, it looks like that. that's one of the worst places. Oklahoma and then also County and then uh, Grady County. Yolo County. <laughs> Yolo County, I didn't know that existed. Um, and then there is another giant splotch of it running down the the uh, western border of Arizona. It looks like um, they're not as bad, but they're still in the Mojave dangerous, County yeah, dangerous level. Yeah, Mojave. Yeah. yeah, there's not much. You know, that's kind of weird in Mojave County. I've, driven, yeah, I've been through there. There's not much there. Well, there's again, the, I uh, think that, that it doesn't. It doesn't mean that um, they're looking at the the water table underneath. They're just looking at the distribution center. So yeah. who knows that uh, that's the other thing. I don't know that the, like say Mojave County has this really high level of contamination. They may be selling their, the water that's coming out of the ground there to other people in the country in terms of this may be a station that's pumping out water for a bottling uh, company. You know? Yeah. We'd have to do so some more investigation. Not, yeah. Yeah. That, that's why I'm saying like, it would like, be very, it would be very useful if we could get some buy-in from people who are at, in those areas where it's highly, highly contaminated and see if they're actually even consuming the water that's coming, <laughs> coming out of there. Or if it, or if it, beyond that, is this being shipped out to other parts of the country or across the world? Are we, are we exporting all of this contaminated water in bo in bottles um, specifically from these areas? Because then, that that goes to a whole other sick level of you know. Well, some of these some it, of these it, some of these maps, you know, there's some places, some areas I know from where I'm back from that these might not even apply because some of them use underground water, underground rivers, right. and Stuff like that. Yeah. the 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 citizens living on the ground, like I said it, it, in, before too, like how many have wells? How many are using cisterns or you know like various depending on where you are in the county and and whether or not you're using the public water that's coming out of the out of there but if they're not pumping it out for their own you know just just because they feel like pumping water i mean they're obviously doing it for a reason somebody's somebody's ingesting it somebody's buying it somebody's using it it's being it's being supplied to someone otherwise they wouldn't bother to have a pumping station yeah so it, I mean, if they're testing at the distribution center at the pumping station, and this is this is affected, the next step is to say where is it going. And I don't, see, yeah, I don't see anything on here that indicates those details in terms of. Well, there's, there's also another one I know. It's a, it's a disaster uh, up in uh, thermal thermal um, thermal California. 
uh, what is it, the Salton Sea? That's a natural. That's a natural disaster. You ever been out there? Right. Yeah, it's yep. a, it's a, um, uh, it was an aqueduct that had broken and created a, a lake, and it was kind of popular in the '60s. But uh, um, it's actually filled with hydrogen sulfide or something like that. That sounds familiar. I'm trying to remember. That was a while. The Salton back Sea, yeah, the Salton okay. Sea. I've been out there, and uh, to, lo and behold, there's a lot of farming out there. And I'm not sure what water source they're using, but I definitely hope not. They're not using the local water and filtering it. Yeah. Oh, well, that's a good. That's a good point because also with with that with those areas, like for instance in Arizona, I mean, the, if they're using it for irrigation. Then certainly. all of this is get all of the metal is getting into the the food sources that are being grown in those areas, yeah. and and then and you know like I mean that goes into well how much of it is contaminated and in terms of like what where it's being like who who is growing all of this and using that I mean are they are they major companies that are 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 using that on their water or is it just like small farms that are doing this that don't even know about it I mean there are just so many levels. But the, the Salton Sea, isn't that like Coachella, the area? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's yeah, what I thought. Because I was like, wait a minute. And I, yeah, so and I'm driving, driving through there. I, you know, I didn't know. Uh, I didn't know about driving. You know, when I was driving through there, there was actually quite a bit of farms out there. Quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. But uh, now that I see, it, they even have a little map that that shows the drainage area, and it looks like, uh, yeah, Mexicali, Salton Sea, Palm Desert, Coachella, Palm Springs. Yeah. It's just been long since I've been out there. <laughs> <laughs> now you know a lot of areas will have natural uh, collection spot like that. They don't have, they'll they'll be like drainage off of the mountains, you know, the, and the uh, runoff and whatnot. But it, the the lower basins don't actually drain off anywhere. You get these alkaline areas. And, uh, you know, the, I don't know if the salt and seas like that, but there's there's several natural uh, ways to you know, where you get these high levels of metals and all as well. Uh, that Oregon area was like that. The basin that they're in doesn't, it, it, the water doesn't run off essentially. And uh, it just keeps collecting and collecting things like a high uranium levels up there. But it's, oh, well, it's, it's naturally exactly. occurring. Yeah. It's just a small town in the middle of nowhere, but your water supply has got issues. You know? Yeah, because I mean, like there is a certain amount of naturally occurring contamination in terms of when you talk about the the, the heavy metals that are in the in the systems. Uh, but then, but then again, you know, th there is a certain level that's acceptable, and and beyond that, then it becomes, you know, it becomes more than just the natural contamination. Yeah. And and I don't I don't know that. Um, I don't know that even just the, the runoff from that area was as bad as as um, like when you get into all of the other of the other things that cause that type of like disgusting runoff from from like just the the, t the farms that we were talking about like how they they will have to force all in order to be profitable you have to put all of the animals into a very very small um, at, at least profitable in terms of turning your mind turning your your uh, your product over to large companies. You, you'll have to smash all of your um, your cattle into one little tiny area, and you have all of your you know, all of the chickens in coops and and everything else that that causes those gigantic pits full of 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 uh, you know waste that are then causing runoff and contamination to all the different areas that are using the water for irrigation. So there there are uh, many many places that probably have that kind of that can that type of contamin contamination that is known and it has been reported, but it's not even on a map. It's not something that you can pull up and say, "Well, here's an area, and this is what this is what's causing it." The, this runoff here or the drainage from that. I haven't been able to find anything like that online, uh, unless you're aware of a of a website that tracks all that. Mm -hmm. I don't think there is. Well, there should be because you think. I mean, I you know that the environmental quality people like the state people they pretty much go down every you know major waterway and creek and, and whatnot testing you know look looking for contaminants dumping you know all kinds of different issues uh they have to be testing i, I would think you know a lot of this would come out of state agencies 
Oh, and then, that's what I was Let's looking see. up. I, I was trying to find like, the more local stuff. But I'm what I'm what I'm wondering is like while you can look it up individually, like you know if if you're if it's from your town or your location, but it, you can probably find the information if you poke around a little bit. But I don't think there's been a concerted effort to say like layer all, like layer on one map all of the different types of reports that say you know this is this is where there's been a spill this is where there's contamination here's what's happening with fracking here's what's happening with chromium 6 here's what's happening with lead you know just one stop yeah. stop map that says here we go bam yeah. the entire oh. country this is what's going on with your water tables this is what's going on with your you know environmental pollutants and ever, and so on and so forth and be able to dig through that and see what is what is really dangerous in your area and what you should be what you should be watching out for and whether or not you can even use your own your own water source in your backyard let alone the stuff that's being pumped out by the city so that's that's a lot of data that's mm -hmm. lacking in in terms of like put you have to you have to basically jump from from one organization to another and 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 look at everything uh you know from a so many different angles that it's it's very it's very difficult if you're if you don't know what to look for again it's kind of like getting back to that whole um discussion about how you get you know if you if you were able to use a a search where you could just you could just draw a circle on a map and, and be able to say like this is what i want to look at right now and and give me all the information for there that's that's very different from trying to find out all the information on your own and going through keyword searches to locate everything and and do the research yourself like you basically have to become a, a, a private investigator to keep yourself healthy and that that is very very hard for a lot of people who don't have experience using uh using all of the different things that are out there in terms of like, you know, uh, putting all the data together, because I don't think people have been taught that this is what you need to do at this point in time. You can't just click on a map and say, this is, this is all data that's up to date. And it's, it's being put together by a, 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 you know, a government body that's supposed to help you stay healthy and be informed. We don't have something like that. I mean, everything is broken up on purpose so that you don't, so, yeah. You don't have that whole picture, and you can't I, say I'm, this. I'm, nope. I'm sure internally they have reports like oh, this. Oh, hey, no. <laughs> I'm not saying this doesn't yeah. exist inside yeah. of, the, you know, like the, the actual state systems or inside the federal government. This is all known to people who don't want you to have that kind of knowledge and power over your own government. But when it comes to the average citizen, you can't just jump online and be like, show me where all the contamination is and all the water tables across the country. No. You know, like you're not going to get that. So now, isn't Jim that guy, guy Jim doing something like this? Because he yeah, seems to yeah. be able to draw on a lot of data from different sources. and kind of makes his own maps and all this. Yeah, you know, he had a couple of interesting ones there, like he could like where you could zoom in and look at stuff. I was I was surprised. Yeah, that, so he's, that's he's exactly started, what I was talking about. Yeah, he's doing some of those things already. But. I think uh, the old one. You, well, and now that the the crowd map with the new user interface, it, ha it just looks like cleaner. But basically, people have started putting in um, like generating their own maps, and basically, you can say, well, I want to put all this information in about water contamination in this one area, and then if you go if you go into it farther, you can actually pull all the results from from just you know like water contamination, if you want. So you could pretty much get real time updates as far as what's going on. Um, you can get emails sent to you, and there's an app that, that that is for your phone. And then he's working on something beyond that. I think in terms of like making it more, more, e more easy to uh, to go in and say instead of well, I want to pull a report on on uh, contamination, like what he was saying, you can actually go in and select an area and just get in contact with people. But I think that's like more of a social media platform kind of thing yeah. to replace. But in the meantime, what I've been doing is I've been telling people, well, start start mapping all this information in the in the um, website. Like, start inputting the, the data now because if you know that can always be exported, it can always be put into another system if you need to, or it can be linked through an API or whatever you want to do. It's not it's not something that's difficult. It's just you need to get the data in in order for people to be able to see what's going on. And it is a really nice way of, of illustrating it. And when you see it in a, in a, like a global model or, you know, something that, that shows the entire country all at once and you can zoom in down to that level, I think it's, it's a lot of fun to play around with, but 
until you get everybody committed to actually putting the data in, you're not going to really be able to look at much. So, um, yeah, so that's, yeah, that's what we're trying to do. The, get, uh, get the, all the contaminants agents. that we can find put in. And then, you know, take it, like, let people know this is some place that you can, you can start tracking all of it. And we can start drawing conclusions based on actual data instead of saying, well, let's try to put all of this information together slowly over the next 10 years from all these different databases that you don't have full access to anyway. I mean, putting putting all of it together on your own is really what will will change things as opposed to waiting for some institution to do it for you or suing somebody into in, into doing something because of course that's going to be 10 years from now when they'll go just like with just like with the okay. with the updates that you get you know there's, these are reports that the last one on the epa's website i, I mean like the last time it was uh concluded and actually like the last data was for what 2015 so that's we're already two years out. Well, yeah, it, I mean, what you're asking for is more agency access to data, and say co college access. You know, I guess academic, you know, whatever tests they might be able to do as well. But that's you're going to have to compel them to do it. That's right, right. Because well, you, you know you the data is there; they're doing do these tests, but you don't have the access to the test results. They, yeah, they only get published every so often. And then again, there's also only every so many years do they actually put forward a concerted effort to, to, to um, run the testing. Like, um, you know, what was it, 2014, 2015. So the data is in some of those institutions. But again, if you, if you start waiting around for those court cases to be finished up, like if you actually legally do get a, ju you get a judgment that compels the release of that information, I mean, that can be held up in the court system for goodness knows how long, because is that really the priority for for any any legal hearing to go through that it gives you more information? Like actually accessing stuff that's important and, and would it, it would um, illuminate an entire country. <laughs> I don't think about, that that's uh, in your best interest. <laughs> how about FOIA requests? Uh, if you, that yeah, that's a an lot agency easier. request. You can do that at any point in time. Like in but, Rock, yeah. have you used that at all? If you haven't, I would uh, recommend using it. Muckrock, Muck, is it? Yeah, Muckrock, M U C K R O C K dot com. They will actually help you put your um, uh, FOIA requests through, and you can search it. Um, for all the stuff that's already been put out, and you can even find out what's in progress currently, so you don't have to submit duplicate reports, um, or duplicate requests, rather. But if you go to their website, you can see, actually, let me, let me give you the, you can put this, this out, because it, it should be something that everybody's accustomed to using. Um, if you become a member, I think it's for like five bucks or something like that, they will actually work with you to get the information pulled. So, like, if you're getting a hard time or you get denied, they have people who deal with this all the time, and and reporters who go through it, they'll 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 support you in your efforts. And they said they'll even help you with um, what was the one example? Like, if you need to find out what the the law is for, do you need to keep your dog on a leash in your county or your town? You know, they'll help you find that information if it's not publicly accessible. So they don't care how small it is; they just want people to have access to all that kind of information. Like one of the big things that they're working on is the um, like right now they have the list of stuff. It's like counting the uncounted, the sexual assault evidence collection kit project, and they're working on um, pulling information about the untested kits that sit in evidence rooms and crime labs across the country because there's no federal law in place mandating policies or testing of kits, and they don't know how many more are uncounted. So that's one project that's being worked on, and they have a private prison project. Um, in terms of finding out what, uh, what how the, the for-profit prisons have leveraged the legal system to their advantage, picking and choosing inmates to offload costs and ignoring complaints and concerns. So they have some really big projects running right now, and um, you know they have they have people who are are just individually contributing to the different efforts that are going on. If it, you know, like uh, through either donations or doing investigations with the data once it's released. Because that's a lot of it's kind of like with like crowdsourcing the um, 
crowdsourcing, reading the documents and, and just letting, letting everybody have access to everything at once and pull up whatever they find. This one was funny. The, uh, the one about uh, the CIA's declassified UF photos are garbage. <laughs> I did, there, there, are, there are some really silly things that come out too. Like you, see, you, you can actually read about how um, what was the one the uh, the misunderstanding of of math, like middle school math, had caused the the uh, what was it the the uh, investigation into or the the uh, experiments with with mind control. I think that was uh, one Project of the, the small things, the little tidbits that came out. Like you see really bizarre stuff that comes out from the government, like what they, the CIA has been working on and, uh, you know, like the, that kind of stuff is, is pretty funny. But uh, you should check it out because there's a, there's a lot of good information in there if you, um, if you haven't taken a look at it before. All right. Yeah, no, I, I haven't. In fact, I think I think that when you, when you look at the, the for instance the climate information that Jim presented in his uh, in his uh, PowerPoint, he had gone gone in front of some some body and presented um, like it was a group, and he had presented all the information he had on geoengineering, and all the documentation that he had. Um, I actually went searching for some of it in Muckrock, and I realized that I don't think all of it's been pulled from there because it hasn't been that old, or it hasn't been around that long. Like Muckrock was only within the last not even the last decade, I guess. Um, so it, it's, it's to everyone's benefit if you're pulling information from agencies or if you're asking for that kind of thing to be released to go through this one website because at least it's available to everyone in one location. Just like with the crowdsourced map. The fuck? Sorry, I'm slamming shit. Yeah, what are you doing over there? <laughs> You're fixing your machine. <laughs> Get a bigger hammer. Yes. <laughs> it is required. <laughs> well, if I told you what I was smashing, you'd be like, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> yeah, the, uh, let's see. The no, no wonder your Wi Fi is hiccuping over there. Or whatever. <laughs> No, there's. I don't want to say it. I'll, I'll tell you after what's going on, but I've got All an right. issue, issue with a roommate. Oh yeah, that that was the other thing that I found on here um, about how the insane clown posse is considered a terrorist, terrorist organization. organization. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why is it? If you're just scaring people, I mean, it's weird. But if you're just scaring them, it's not an assault. But don't you remember? Scary... Don't you remember the clowns yeah. going around and shooting people and doing weird shit? Yeah, uh, yeah. That was totally not fake. Shooting no. there, there was a rumor that went around that um that that, that clowns were 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 terrorizing the country, um because a few people in a, a few areas had seen um something. I guess they somebody had dressed up like a clown and had done something um that that was shady. Like they thought somebody had been kidnapped by a clown. Uh, or someone in a clown costume, and then it got it got passed around so much by word of mouth that I think it just evolved into a almost like an urban legend kind of thing. And then some somehow, of course, the government picks it up <laughs> and they 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 twist it. I mean, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised if just about every or every group is under some type of scrutiny by oh they are you know oh, this I is, mean like when you so, when you start to you read through what they what they put out, you're just like well. What exactly yeah. qualifies to get you on this list? <laughs> any any group, they they believe that if this is one, and, and you have to dig through it. But it, you know, one of their missions is, and, and and their belief is, they need to infiltrate every group to know what's going on. So you know, it, it's nothing personal. It's like NSA spying. We collect it all. You know, even yeah. we tap the Pope's phone. Hey, it's it's nothing personal. We just want to know what the hell you're up to. We need to know. It's but it's but it is really fun. I I like the part that where they just they don't understand um, what's going on, even though they 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 have access to the groups and they could actually make some in you know like some qualified judgments when it comes to or you know like maybe maybe not qualified, but you could you could make some logical uh, conclusions based on the data that's that's uh, available to you. But instead, it goes off into this 
this whole like conspiracy area where there must be something else going on, which is it's it's kind of funny because then people do the same thing to the government. But I mean, like just the absurdity of some of this stuff. Like, but then again, if you can't if you you can't grasp concepts such as margins of error or non-zero probabilities, then you know you have some bigger issues. Uh, but, uh, oh yeah, and well, it, it's, uh, that, it's it's a different way to think. You know, it's like, it, it, you know, mili- if you ever know people in the military, they they think a certain way. It's it's different than a civilian. Uh, engineers think different than people. You know, uh, everybody, artists, everybody has their their persona and and their backgrounds. But it, it really affects the way you think. You, know, you, you can see it in people. But yeah, if you're into that like military security mode. You're pretty. You don't. You don't trust anybody. You know. But it's, it's not even. A, it's <laughs> yeah. not even the trust issue. It just. What. What gets me is the fact that it just sounds like there's just some really, really, out of touch person who sits in an office somewhere, and they, the information comes across their desk, and then they they just they just make they read it, and they don't they don't understand what's going on, and then they're the ones that decide. Well, yeah, we're going we're going to we're going to keep paying attention to this and launch more investigations into that and. All of the information, it's just, it, to me, it's hilarious. Like, if I'm bored, I'll go read the, whatever has been released about, like, you know, the, the uh, anarchists in, this, in the 60s and 70s. And it's just hilarious, like, how they're just being trolled on such a level that's... <laughs> it's, 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 it's hilarious. And then it's all taken seriously and noted, and, and everybody's like, oh, my gosh. You know, like, even just the whole thing about the LSD in the water, like, how they... <laughs> how the the all the water systems were protected because somebody had thrown out the the idea that they were going to um they were going to pop lsd into all the water systems and and start uh making everybody believe whatever they wanted so so the the whole the the the, the systems were put under uh observation <laughs> like seriously like they were absolutely they, they had to be project had to be, mayhem yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dad, is it okay if I get this bow and arrow and shoot it out of the crowd? Sure, son. You're on LSD now. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like if you read some of the stuff that Abby Hoffman was writing was was talking about, it's just it's just like next level trolling of like an entire agency. It's just like yeah, this is well, what's actually, going you know, on you now. know that was that was just one of um, that was one of many plans that the uh, CIA had. Uh, they were actually thinking about using um, LSD as a uh, chemical warfare weapon, and the but this was before. Um, God, they even had oh, they even had they even had a gay drug. Remember that that the gay the gay bomb. Yeah, yeah They had the yeah. gay bomb where they were trying to introduce aerosol pheromones in bombs to try. You know, it was the weirdest shit. But this was the weird weirder one where they would actually do. Um, um, they would get uh, a plane and fly it over the enemy and uh, drop aerosol, aerosol-based um, uh, LSD over an enemy, and then they would have soldiers come in and uh, basically, t- with no effort, overthrow an enemy. And this is the Vietnam era, so. Yeah, yeah. It was, uh, but I guess that's because the, the, the government has been involved in that kind of thing, using... Like the MK Ultra and, and 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 using drugs to control people and and you know even in the military like you pump people full of drugs and then when they get home, you know you, they're not getting their daily dose of stuff so you know you start to lose your mind sometimes and you can't deal with the the uh, psychological impact of warfare after you come back because you're not on the same type of maintenance drugs that you were on before, and you know, you have all kinds of problems. Um, because you don't you don't necessarily know what is being given to you to to help you deal with that kind of of, of uh, emotional trauma on the ground and, and continue to function. So yes, yeah, so the government uses that all the time. But the fact that I think it's funny that when people actually talk about stuff in a joking way because they know that the the government is doing that, then that just raises all kinds of alarm bells. Well, yeah, it's like oh my god. Well, they, they were still giving. Actually... They were still giving. Um... Uppers to uh, uh, um, God uh, um, in the Air Force uh, for long mm-hmm. flights. Yeah, because you uh, can't you true, can't possibly yeah. function um, at, at at that the peak performance level if you're, if you're even slightly tired. <laughs> no, 
Yeah, because I, I wanted to be a pilot for a really long time, and then when I looked into it some more, I realized like what that was actually going to entail, and I was like, ooh, I don't know if I want to be. I, I don't know. I don't know if I want to be dealing with that kind of uh, that kind of maintenance system when it comes to drugs. Um, it's it's not it's not healthy, and and who knows what the long term you know like the long term mental health repercussions are. Oh, for amphetamines, know. yeah, not good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I think that's that's one of the reasons that uh, that it's it's not talked about. But a lot of veterans that come back from from wars now, like even if they haven't been physically maimed, the, and the emotion and and the emotion and, and the emotional part of it is is um is even being addressed in in counseling or or any type of therapy with, for PTSD. You're still not you're not acknowledging the fact that they were on drugs to maintain a um, certain type yeah, of performance level yeah they do um, um, um i've heard this from several uh, my friends that came back they were given um valium to deal with the stress yeah yeah, yeah. because while you're there you're you're you, you know you have to you have to keep up with what's going on you can't and and also even if you even if you're um if you're functioning on that type of um, at that type of level of of uh, uh, mental st mental and physical stimulation in terms of being on edge and prepared at any given moment of the day to to you know like it's that whole fight or flight your fight or flight mechanism is turned on um, to to the point where like you you have an overstimulation going on in your brain and after a while you form new pathways within your brain and that becomes the new normal for you you can no longer turn it off you can never get out of that fight or flight mode you know so you can come back and say like you know I, I've, I've had a year or two or three to deal with um, reintegration into uh, uh, whatever the society expects from you I think they give them 90 days that's about it yeah I mean, like what that like that does shit um, but you know, if you've if you've if you've grown like if you form those pathways in your brain, that's something that you need years to decompress from. Basically, you know, like serious, actual, like you know, train, trained individuals who are going to work with you and say like this is how you do this. Like it's it's many different levels of therapy for that kind of thing because you put somebody into an unnatural situation for so long that you've actually caused them to remap their brain. Yeah. So, I mean, who do you who do you know that comes back after 90 days that is, is getting all of those things taken care of? They can barely get, you know, the, the physical needs taken care of. Like, I don't, I know that the VA is, like, severely underfunded. And well, it's, you know what they found? They found, you know, they feasible. found, I think they found, uh, uh, what was it here in uh, uh, one of my local, local, local area around here, they found a, a numerous health violations around the, uh, I'm not going to say what city, but I think you know what I'm talking about. They uh, around the, yeah. the VA. Yeah, and that's not just one location. Like some, and some of them, granted, they have they have excellent facilities. I'm not saying that's everyone. I mean, like I have, I know someone who was work, working at the VA uh, hospital nearby, and they they were they even had a, a new building go up, and they were expanding, and it was gorgeous. It was, I mean, like it was actually a very nice place when I would when I would go there. I let me let was me, like, let me this see, is let unlike me what I would have post, post the article. But uh, it's it's not every location, and and when you have serious physical health problems, you you need that care, and you're not necessarily going to just be um, handed that. Like a lot of people have have not only had trouble finding it at their VA, but they get denied for all kinds of. Here we go. I'll show you. I'll, sh I'll show you what's going on. Let me put this article in the chat room. There we go. Uh, oh, okay. Cool. Holy crap. Yep. Oh my god. Rotting bodies. Oh my god. And then and then it, why why is that happening? Well, are they uh, I, I mean, they're not probably not getting funding. I I don't oh, know. I don't shit. No, that's, that's That's wrong. <laughs> they, they and and, and again, I mean, it's it's it goes it goes to show like, you know, how do you treat how do you treat your your veterans how how do you treat them after all of that you know we're we're treating the people who are 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 putting their lives in danger all the time uh, for years and 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 then coming back from from all of that like and, and we're treating them like 
well, you should just jump right back into society and have no problems. And then when you have an issue, it's something that you, you, you can't get the, the care for and you can't get the help. And then nobody cares enough to start. Okay, we got, we got reconnected. Oh. Hold on. That was really weird. Actually, you know, there was, there was, uh, was it, which VA center was it that had all that, um, uh, all the uh, controversy around it? There was one specific one. It was Walter Reed, wasn't it? That was, uh, that was a big problem that had to get re, uh, re-evaluated. Uh, and then they, they tried to improve the conditions there. And that was, that was just one well-known location that had rats running around inside of it as well. I don't think it was just one VA center that had rats, but this was like really, really bad. Well, yeah, and I remember that was across the nation. Like everybody it. heard, heard well. of, of that one um, hospital because it was where all of the, uh, wasn't it the, the most severe uh, wounded had gone to recuperate? It was like physical rehabilitation and um, everybody that was in there had like very serious head trauma and they were, they were being, um, they were being forced to live in a location that was just, it was, it was nasty and disgusting and, and like, you know, not much better than being on the street, basically, when it came down to it. I mean, it was just, it was the worst thing that I've ever heard of in terms of, in terms of hospitals. And that's when I started looking into what do veterans hospitals actually do? And, and how do they, how do they actually treat people? And how do you get um, the care once you come back from a deployment overseas and you're no longer, you know, like if you're injured or you're no longer, um, you're no longer in a position where you, you can, you can function even if you wanted to go back uh, because of injuries. And, and it was just insane how much hasn't been covered um, now that everything's all about what, what do you call it? The, uh, you know, the, 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 the corrupt politicians that are, um, not going to be removed from from their actual uh, positions of power. I mean, like everything's about impeachment, but we should uh, before that it, everything should have been and and should now be about things like this. Like, what are we doing to change this? How how are we bringing pressure to bear to make things better for veterans? For you know, for the sick, for the old. Like, we don't treat people who are old with any any kind of um, Morals, care or concern yeah. or respect yeah, you, know, like you, you get old you get to that, yeah. into a facility yep in those facilities <laughs> there's numerous health violations all the time yeah because i don't see how people don't see that this translates like if you're looking at a veterans hospital this is supposed to be taking care of your veterans your your people who have sacrificed for your country and then you're going to say that that's okay to treat them like that but let's put our let's put our grandparents and and our parents into a facility that's probably treating them worse than that because there is no real true monitor of that. That's a private, uh, you know, a private facility, just like any other private system. It's going to work to profit itself the the, the most. Again, the same thing happens with like you know, uh, child services. They don't, uh, you know, like there are people who actually want to do good and are trying to help others, um, and and are there to try to to um, protect children. But then there are, are huge huge holes in that whole the whole um, system where kids are, are, are getting like sold to people or they're, they're getting abused. Like they're, it's just disgusting because we don't treat our vets, our old or our, our like the most deserving who have been through the most, like the most horrible things in, in, that you can imagine. They're not treated with any respect and any dignity. So our country is basically at a point where we, we don't have any morals. We don't have any, concern for anybody else in, in, in a way that's expressed. Um, it, it's not expressed in, in, as, a, as a value for our culture. Like we, that this, this shouldn't be something that has to be brought up. It should just be the way that you take care of uh, each other in a society. It shouldn't need to be uh, addressed all the time. You shouldn't have it's, to handhold them and, and lead them around and, and make sure they're doing their job. You have all these inspector general offices and inspectors and supervisors. How come? How come it's not happening? You know, it just yeah, it's institutionalized. That's yeah, the bureaucracy too. I mean, that's 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 how they get. Now the VA is a is 
is essentially government run health care. That was a great example, you know, from from before. If you did if it wasn't good or you didn't like it or things weren't happening, what what made you think that that for the civilians was going to be a good idea. <laughs> right? I mean, well, it wasn't actually, it wasn't actually, it wasn't actually like government, uh, it wasn't actually government regulated <clears throat> healthcare. It was government regulation and integration of private corporatized uh, insurance <laughs> companies into, yeah. into an existing systems. And they knew it was going to fail. They knew that it, they knew that there were problems with it. I mean, you know, in the problem, you know, here's the thing: is that if you didn't get Obamacare, you were going to get Romney Care, and there was like one word difference. So whether you liked it or not, you were going to get health care, and it was designed to fucking fail. It was designed to fail. You can't, yeah, you can't make promises those that grand without it costing you a lot of money. Well, it wasn't. It, it, it was. It was. It was, a, it was a bad solution. I mean, what essentially what they're doing is trying to. Trying to integrate government regulation and and lower cost into a broken system when it's it's not going to work, you know. You don't like fascist well, healthcare. What? No, no. You don't like. Well, it? well you know, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean well, you know what I'm saying is that is that for you know taking care of. <laughs> Taking care of people yeah. for profit, and you know, and getting all of these, uh, you know, insurance comp insurance companies drive up the cost of everything. So you're just supporting a you're just supporting a broken system by, uh, you know, integrating this Obamacare. It's not a real solution to uh, the problems that are out there in the medical in the medical industry. The the other thing is though, I mean, like there are there are several level levels to that kind of healthcare though, because when you t when you talk about the VA health system, it does provide a basic level of care for everybody. And when you talk about getting sick and you talk about like through through normal normal means, like I mean, or normal normal situations, okay, like as a citizen, uh, if you if you get cancer or if you get you know whatever it may be that normally you have a lot of trouble with in in terms of. Um, coverage when it comes to private health insurance companies you you do have some different experiences because there are there was there are uh, stories that people can tell about how you know they, they, they their life was saved because uh, they had this kind of coverage that would never have been provided without question in, in the